All right, guys, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. There's been days where it's been so hectic that I don't remember who I'm about to interview. And as I'm walking into the interview room, my assistant hands me the resume. However, I do know two things. Number one, that the fact that I called you into the interview means that skills wise, your resume hit the mark. And two, I need to buy some time and refresh my memory about you. So what do I do? I ask you the question, tell me about yourself. This is supposed to be an easy question to just warm you up, but for whatever reason, you guys happen to screw it up so many times, I'm not gonna let that happen ever again. We're gonna talk about how to answer that question. I'm gonna share an example with you as well. Stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Brian back at you with another video where my goal here is to help you guys create a career and life that you'll be proud of. And if you like the content today, please hit that subscribe button. Okay, when it comes to tell me about yourself, guys, this is your moment to shine. This is an easy question that you're supposed to present yourself in the best possible light. And really, it should answer the question, why should I hire you? But we're going to save that for another episode. I'm actually going to share an example response. But before I do, it's really important for us to break down the elements of a really strong answer to tell me about yourself. The first thing you need to know, and it's a bit of an obvious one, but it has to be said is that you have to answer within the scope of work. If this is not a date. I don't need to know you personally at this early stage of the game. Eyes on the prize, guys. The prize is to get yourself an offer or to get into the next interview. So keep your answer within the scope of the job, within the scope of your work history. The next thing you want to do is incorporate more about your growth and transition throughout your work history. Tell me about your title. Tell me a bit about what you did. Tell me your key accomplishments. And really, this is about diving deeper into the information that I didn't find on your resume. I want to know what your motivations were. I want to know why you left. I want to know how the company got better because of you. The other thing you have to make sure of, and that is every statement, everything you say has to show you off in the best light possible. Now, of course, you don't want to sound braggy and there's two ways you can get around that. Number one is you always want to provide value. Show me how you provided value to the company that you worked at or how you're going to provide value to the company that you're applying for. And second, don't tell me what you're good at. Show me by way of your accomplishments, about things that you implemented, about the things you've developed, about how you saved the company money. Don't tell me that you're good. Show me that you're good. Next thing you want to do to really add color and to really hit the right impression, a strong impression, and that is to now talk about your beliefs as well as the major transformations. What circumstances really transformed you? How did they transform you? What were some of the beliefs that you had? I know that you are a hard worker. I know that you probably believe in a growth mindset. Maybe you're someone that doesn't mind getting negative feedback and you learn from that and grow from that. This is your time to talk about these beliefs and be proud of it. Next, you want to pitch your value, what you're known for, what your special, unique quality is that you bring to the table. Let's say you're applying for a project manager role. You've got project management experience. So does the five other people that I'm interviewing. They all have project management experience, but there's something unique about you. Maybe you have a very different mindset. Maybe you're business driven. Maybe you're someone that is fully committed to the role and will put crazy amounts of overtime. Or maybe you're just really good at connecting with people and bringing teams together. There's something special and unique about you that separates yourself from everyone else. And it gives me the opportunity to evaluate you to see if you are the best fit for the current needs of the company. Like any good product, they all have a tagline. They're known for one simple thing. If you think about the iPod when they first launched, it was like a thousand songs in your pocket. That's what you want. You want one statement that summarizes you, your special uniqueness, what you bring to the table and what separates you from the rest of the guys. And finally, at the very end, if you want to, you can talk about something more personal like your family, your hobbies or a personal passion of yours. Just be sure to keep this very brief. So let's get to the moment that you guys all been waiting for and that is the example response. So Brian, please tell me about yourself. Well, to sum up, I've been in the industry for over 15 years. I started my way through college actually working in a co-op position. I worked for a company called Factors Group. They brought me in because they had these new regulations that Health Canada launched. They didn't have anyone to do that type of work. So they brought me in to do exactly that. As soon as I graduated or right before I graduated, they actually offered me a full-time role, which I had to take advantage of. And they wanted me to lead a very specific division of the regulatory department, set up these processes, build a 
team. I did that for two years, loved every second of it, but then I wanted to really complement my skill set. I found that regulatory affairs was very, very good at giving you or outlining the specific laws and regulations and knowing what the rules of the game are, but I really want to get a more hands-on approach. So then I moved over to the validation. I took a validation supervisor role. There I worked with a small team, but we validated two manufacturing facilities. And when I say validated, I'm talking about looking at bringing our manufacturing standards to a pharmaceutical level. And we looked at validating all our test methods, processes, equipment, and even our ERP system. That validation actually got us a TGA certification. TGA means the Therapeutic Goods of Australia. That's like a pharmaceutical level of manufacturing and clearance that can be applied to dietary supplements. When we got that certification, it actually opened up the company's ability to enter international markets. So that's exactly what the company did and actually gained a lot of momentum but on the flip side, they realized that there were a lot of regulatory bottlenecks trying to get into all these different countries. So what do they do? They created an international business unit focused solely on international business. They actually plucked me out of my validation role and put me to lead and sit on that leadership team. I had the wonderful opportunity to build compliance into the product development process, factoring in all these different countries' regulatory requirements. I was able to work very closely with my counterparts in business development, sales, marketing, and operations. And together, we were actually able to grow the international business and actually deliver on year-over-year double-digit growth. So I obviously had this wonderful opportunity with factors to grow and climb that corporate ladder and take on these director roles. But then, at the same time, I realized that that was the only company I ever worked for. So I wanted to try something different. And that's when I moved over to another company called Vega. Now, what's interesting with Vega was that after six months, the company was acquired by Danone, the yogurt company. And so my role changed where essentially I was promoted to head up both the regulatory and quality functions. There I sat on the senior leadership team at Vega, but I also sat on the Danone North America quality leadership team. I was managing a team of about 11 people across supply chain, food safety, regulatory. Uh, we were also doing facility audits. And I was also the crisis manager at Vega. I was media trained, communication trained to handle high profile situations, high pressure situations, and to get them out of those as fast as possible. I love every second of it. And now I come to you focused, ready, and willing to really provide my I've always taken a growth mindset when it comes to my career, but also when it comes to providing value to the company. I really enjoy working with teams and I believe that what I really bring to the table is this ability to build bridges with other different functions of the business unit and bring them together so that we can work as one functional unit. I also add my insight as well as my impact assessment, pitch this all to the executive team so that we can together make the right decision moving forward. Now, on a more personal note, I like to hit the gym, I do martial arts, I really appreciate my family time. And in my spare time, I mentor a recent grad as well as adults starting in their new career. That's me. How about yourself? How did you get here? Tell me a little bit more about you. Whew, <laughs> it's been a while since I've done that. As you can tell, I probably need a little bit more practice and I encourage you guys to do the same. I can't emphasize this enough. This is like the question to nail and definitely practice before you go into the interview. Now, you'll also notice that I threw a question back at the employer. Why did I do that? It really changes the interview dynamic. It's not one way anymore. It becomes less of an interview and more of a conversation. And this is something I strongly teach to all my mentees. And if you really want to create an impression, that's the way to do it. Most people, on the other hand, make the mistake of waiting till the end of the interview to ask their questions. You're gonna do it differently. You're gonna ask questions throughout the interview. I have a video on how to do exactly that and why it's so important to really create a strong impression and to become memorable to the boss and that way they can really sell you to their boss. Guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.